do something, anything in your life, in your world today, where the Imam will take notice, do a double take, say, what is it? I can use that. This is where sometimes we place traps, and then we fall into the traps that we lay for ourselves, right? It's like Wally Coyote, right? Chasing the roadrunner. He gets hit by the anvil that he sets up a roadrunner, right? That's what we do. Set up traps, it's a good trap. As we're walking, we fall into that trap ourselves. That's what we do. One trap that we fall into ourselves is that we keep hearing about this magical number, right? The 313, right? There's movies made about it, there's t-shirts printed, you know, Facebook pages, 313, 313. And we think to ourselves that decades and generations have passed, great ulama have passed, and they haven't been included in the 313. So how can you and I be included amongst those Ashab of Imam Zaman? So we tell ourselves that there's no way I'll get to that stage. And once we've convinced ourselves that we won't get to that stage, we completely become complacent towards the deen. We convince ourselves that, look, I come to Astana whenever there's a Mahara program. I have my family. We do Salat at home. My kids go to Sunday school. I come to the Shahadat of Aladat, I go out with my friends, I go out with my family, I have a nice little comfortable life of Islam, and I'm okay with that. This idea of progressing forward in my Islamic life doesn't exist. And this trap that we place in front of ourselves is a trap and a cop out, if you ask me, to lift the burden from our shoulders to prepare ourselves first for the arrival of our Imam. I'm generalizing. Maybe, hopefully, inshallah, there are many of you out there right now who are constantly progressing forward day by day. For people like me who are complacent, who are lazy, who don't want to do anything at all, we are individuals who simply have convinced ourselves that, look, man, there's no way, bro, I'm getting that 313. When he comes, inshallah, we'll deal with it when he comes. What we don't understand is that the 313 is not just his army. Imam, Imam Zaman's mission will be a global mission. The Prophet of Allah's mission was around the peninsula only. It was limited to Mecca, Medina and surrounding areas. Imam Zaman's mission is going to be global. He requires a lot more people than 300 some odd people to run his mission. Yes, those 313 in our riwayat say that they are the khas commanders of Imam Zaman. But the army and individuals needed to actually execute this government will be in the thousands. That's where you and I come in. And I don't know about anybody in this room, and I've said this in the Divine many times, I'll say it here. All I'm after, me personally, all I'm after is to show the Imam that, you know what? Asad, I can use you in my country. All I wanted to say is that, you know what, see this guy right here, this commander, the 644 guy who has good hair? This guy, he is a commander of mine. He's a soldier of mine. He will break the enemy's back. He's living in those quarters over there. Your job, Asad, is to make sure that his bed is made every single day. Your job is to make sure that his bathroom is clean every single day. So when he's done doing his job in the, in the battlefield, he'll come into a nice clean bathroom and a nice clean bed. If I can get that role in Imam as the Mahdi's army, I'm down. I'm done. If I convince Imam, look, Imam, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a good cleaner. I make a really mean cheese omelet. And I do. I make a sick cheese omelet. I can make that cheese omelet for your soldiers. Every single breakfast will be a nice hot cheese omelet. Just let me be a part of your mission. In somehow, some form. So when people walk around the streets during those days and they see Asa Jaffrey, see this guy? He's part of the Imam's army. He's the cook inside their kitchen. That's all I want. I'm not after 313. I don't want to hold a gun. I don't want to do all that kind of stuff. That's not me. Whatever. I just want to have some nisbat to the Imam. Some question to the Imam. Do something, anything in your life, in your world today, where the Imam will take notice, do a double take, say, wait a second, I can use that in my arm. Whatever it is. 
be it in your professional world, if you're a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, professional, businessman, whatever the case may be, you do it so well that the Imam can say, you know what, you can fix and be my first aid doctor for my soldiers, let's say for example. That's what we need to shoot for. And let's remove the traps and let's start to work towards that. Now, one of the areas that is difficult for us is that we live in this part of the world. 